In this video, we'll walk through an example of how to write a class in Java. The class we're going to write will represent a song or a music file in a music player application. A song in a music application will have some metadata like the name of the song, the artist, and the year it was released. We'll keep it simple and just have those three pieces of metadata in our class. The first thing to do when we're creating a class in BlueJay is to click the New Class button and then select the name of our class, which is going to be Song, and I'll click OK. That will create an orange rectangle for the class that we're creating. If I double click on this to open the text editor, you'll see that there's some code generated for us. Let's just delete that and start from scratch. To, to declare a class in Java, I'm going to write the keyword class and then the name of the class, which is song, and then we'll have braces for the contents of the class or the body of the class. I recommend always writing both braces at once so that you know they match up and then start typing between them. Our song class is going to have fields for the song name, the artist, and the year of release. So let's write those fields. To write a field or declare a field, we're going to write the type of the field and then the name of the field and then a semicolon. So the song's name will be a string, so we'll write string name. String has a capital S in Java. We're going to have the artist, which is also a string. And we're going to have the year of release, which is an int. So I will write int, then year is the name of this field, and then a semicolon. So we've declared three fields for this class to store those three pieces of data about a song. Let's also write a constructor for this class so that when we create a song object, we can give values for these three fields. The, so the constructor will always have the same name as the class, so this is called song. And then the constructor needs round brackets for the parameters of the constructor and then curly braces for the body of the constructor. So I recommend always writing those in pairs so that you can start typing between them. And then we need to take three pieces of data when we're constructing the song. Those will be a name, an artist, and a year. And these will have the same types as the fields. So let's have string name, comma, string artist, comma, int year. And these are different variables to the field. So this name is a parameter to the constructor. This name is a field on the class. This artist is a parameter to the constructor. This artist is a field on the class. So what we need to do is take the values of these parameters and put them into the fields. So to do that, I can write this dot name to refer to the field equals name. So name here refers to the parameter of the constructor, and then this dot name refers to the field. I need to use this dot because the field has the same name as this variable. And then I can also write this dot artist equals artist, this dot year equals year. And what this is going to do is take these three values that are coming into the constructor via the parameters and store them in these fields of the object. So I've written enough code that I can test this code now. Let's compile it. You need to compile the code before you use it. And then I can create one of these objects by right-clicking on the song class and selecting the new song entry from this menu. The keyword new is always needed to create an object in Java. If I click on this, I need to give values for these three parameters on the constructor. So let's create a song called It's Tricky. And the artist is Run DMC. And the year of release is 1987. Notice that I need double quotes around a string, but not around an int. I'll click OK here, and this is going to create a song object. If I double click on this song object, you can see the values of the field. So I've got the name is It's Tricky, the artist is Run DMC, and the year is 1987. And I can also access the fields in code. If I write song1.name, then I can see the name, song1.artist. I can see the artist and song1.year, I can see the year. So song1 is actually a variable that holds a reference to this object. Song1 is not actually the name of the object. Let's also write some methods on the song class, so I'll double click on this and reopen the source code. It's common, rather than accessing the fields directly, it's common to want to have getter and setter methods for those fields. So we'll write some getter and setter methods for the name, artist, and year. Let's write the getter methods first. We're going to have a method called getName, which returns the name. And the way to declare a method in Java is to write the return type of the method. The name is a string, so that's string with a capital S. 
and then this method is called getName. And this method takes no parameters, but I still need the round brackets for the method. And then we always need braces for the body of the method as well. And let's start typing between these braces. This method is going to get the value of the name field, so all I need to do is write return name. In this case, I don't need to write this dot name because there is no other variable called name here, so this name must refer to the field called name. I can also write getter methods for the artist and the year. So the artist is also a string, so get artist will return a string. Need round brackets for a method, and then braces for the body of the method. And then this method will return artist. Note that you need a semicolon at the end of a return statement, the same as for any statement. Let's also write a getter method for the year. The year is an int, so I'll write int get year. My braces go in pairs, and I write between them. And then I need to return the year. Let's also write some setter methods. A setter method, the responsibility of that setter method is to take a new value for the field and assign it to the field. And a setter method won't return anything, so its type is void. So this method will be called setName. I need round brackets for the method and braces for the body of the method. And this method should take a parameter for the name. And that will be a string. And I want to set the value of the name field to be the value of this name parameter. So I need to write this dot name to refer to the field because there is another variable called name here. And then I'll say equals name semicolon. Let's do the same for the artist and the year. Let's write a set artist method, void set artist. This needs to take a parameter for the new artist. And then I'll write this dot artist equals artist. Finally, we can write a setter for the year. And then this method needs to take a new value for the year, which is an int. And then I'll write this dot year equals year. So now that I've changed this class, I need to compile it again. You always need to compile a class before you use it in BlueJ. And you'll notice that because I've compiled this class, this song one object is gone. Anytime you compile um, a program again, uh, you will do what's called reset the Java virtual machine, which means that any variables or objects you'd created previously are reset, they're gone. So let's just create those again. If I right click on this constructor and call it, then I can create a song called It's Tricky by Run DMC, and that was released in 1987. I can create another song called Newborn, and the artist is Muse, and this was released in 2001. So now I've got two song objects that I can play around with. So let's do song1.getName. Let's call the get name method on this object, and that's it's tricky. Song one dot get artist should give me run DMC, and song one dot get year should give me 1987. You can actually also call these methods by right clicking on the object. So if I right click and call the get artist method, that should give me run DMC. So this is another way to call the method in BlueJ, but it's worth getting used to writing the code to call the method. Now the artist name here is actually slightly wrong. Run DMC should have a dash between these two words. So I'm going to call the set artist method to correct that. This should be run dash DMC. And I need a semicolon at the end here because this is not an expression. This method does not return a value, it's void. So I need a semicolon to call this method. And now if I take a look inside the object, I can see that the artist is run dash DMC. If I call the get artist method, I should see the new value, which is run dash DMC. Now we might also want to update the data on song two. So suppose we've mislabeled this song and it's actually a live version of the song. So let's change the name of the song, song two dot set name. And this needs a semicolon at the end. And the new value of the name, this is a string, so it needs to be in double quotes. And this is going to be newborn, and then brackets live. And this live version of the song happens to be released in 2008 rather than 2001. So let's set that. 
And if I take a look inside the song to object, I should see those new values. So the name is now newborn live and the year is 2008. And I can also see that by calling the getter methods. So the year is 2008 and the name is newborn live. So now that you've watched me write this class, I recommend writing it yourself. Create some song objects, call their methods, see their fields. It's worth practicing this yourself so that you get used to writing the syntax of Java.